So that's your family out there? Yes. <laughs> Never been through anything like this in my life. So. All right, yeah, we'll be all right. Yeah. <laughs> as long as you're honest. I'm going to be honest as a pope. So are you originally from down here? I am from oh, Buffalo, okay. Florida. How'd you end up in Tallahassee? School. School. Which one? I went to TCC and in Florida State. I, I was gonna say no. Go <laughs> Knows, yeah. That's yeah, how. Yeah. And then I got a job there, and I stayed there. Okay. Do you like it in Tallahassee? I like it. I like it. It's a lot different from down here. Mm. This first time I've ever been <laughs> down this this far down. So. Oh my gosh. But growing up, I had a good upbringing with the family, and what you don't know, you don't know <laughs> until that's, you venture out. That's true. Yeah, that's true. So, I guess they say it's not where you're from is who raised you. I believe that. <laughs> yeah, I really do. So that's how I got to Tallahassee, and I've been here since. Cool. Yeah. How long was y'all drive? What was it like? A how long was it? Six hours. Yeah, about six, seven hours. Oh, the drive? Yeah. I did, I did pretty good time. Yeah. <laughs> you did Turnpike Okeechobee, or you went through Clearmont? <laughs> yeah, we 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 uh, hit seventy five, and then the uh, Turnpike. Okay. Yeah. Is that how you always come down? I usually do, but this time I went Avon Park, so I had to go through Houston, Florida. How come you had to go through Houston? That's where my sister lives. Oh. Okay. <laughs> Um, well, we met outside, but again, I, I'm Kevin Shea. Okay. Um, and you met Sergeant Hurts, correct? Yes, Miss Debbie. She goes by Debbie. Debbie. Well, you can call me Kevin. Okay. Yeah, Kevin. Okay. So, um, you know why we're down here? Yes. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, we're, I mean, we're going to start out very simple and just get some background information from you and whatnot, and if you don't mind that way, I make sure that I have all your contact information, and I just want to double check that, all right? Okay. Um, you gave me your mother's address down here. You mind giving me your address up in Tallahassee? 3111. 3111. Mulberry Park Boulevard. Mulberry Park Boulevard. You want Tallahassee, Florida, 32111. How long have you lived there? Almost a year now. Almost a year? Mm-hmm. Where did you live before that? I lived in Arborview. Arborview? Mm-hmm. That's nice. Do you like it over there? I liked it. Did you? But I, when I got my daughter, it was my little pad for a long time. And when I got her, we outgrew the place, so it was time to get something larger. Oh, really? Yeah, we're in Southwood now, so it's great. Oh, good. Yeah, yeah. Southwood is nice. It is. Yeah. <laughs> How long were you in Arborview? Ooh, about 10 years. Really? I was there since college. Oh, wow. Mm-hmm. And then I met a guy, and we were going to get married, and then he didn't want kids, so I ended up leaving him and going right back to my same apartment in Auburview. Really? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> oh, so I was like, that was just destiny for me to go back. Yeah. Very good. Mm-hmm. Very good. Um, and your phone number is 850-321-5006, correct? That's correct. Do you have any other cell numbers, house numbers, or anything? Um, this is the phone I use. I have another number. It's 449-9504. Is that 850? Uh-uh, it's 561. 561-449-9504. Right. Is that a cell phone? Yeah, but it's never on. I just My grandmother, I got it for her years ago, but she's passed along, but I never got rid of it. Uh, and is that the phone? No, this is my phone, 850 Okay. I never really used other phone. Uh, okay. And you said you're staying with your mother? Yes. The neither, right? That's correct. And I stay with my dad, too, sometimes. Okay. Um, what's your father's name? Ike Moore, Jr. I'm sorry? <laughs> Ike. You going to have to sell that for me? I-K-E. <laughs> I-K-E. Moore, M-O-O-R-E. Yeah. Jimmy. Right. Very good. And um, does your does your uh, mother does she have a landline or uh, she have a cell? She just has a cell, mm-hmm. just a cell. Yeah. Can you mind giving me that number, please? Yes, five six one. Uh huh. Nine eight five three six 
six zero zero. Okay. What about your or your dad, Mr. Eichmore? He has a landline. He ate it. He has a landline. He has a landline? Yeah. What's his landline? 561 uh -huh. 753 753 2168. 2168. Mm -hmm. Very good. I like that name. Eichmore. <laughs> yeah. Very good. Very good. All right. So. You now live at 3111 Mulberry Park Boulevard. You lived there for about a year, you said? April will be a year. Okay. Mm -hmm. And before that, you lived at Arborview. Okay. And you lived there forever. Forever. Okay. Sounds like. But then you had your child. I had my daughter. When did you have your daughter? I had her 42910. 42910. <laughs> Very good. She's beautiful, by the way. Oh, thank you. Yes, she is. The house, you, you, do you live in a house or apartment? So in it's South a condominium. But you own it though, right? Are you I don't. It? I rent it. Okay. Okay. All right. So she's got a birthday coming up. She do. How old is she? She's three. Yeah. She's big. She is. Wow. She's tall. Well, she's she tall. Is. You're tall. Yeah. So. Fortunately, her dad is tall. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And, uh, her father is Adam Michael Frosch. <laughs> okay. All right. Very good. Mm -hmm. Um. So, her father is uh, Adam. Then. That's correct. Okay. And. One hundred percent sure. One hundred percent sure. <laughs> yeah. That's good. That's good. Um, it's my understanding that that has created some conflict in the past. Is that correct? Mm, I guess on, well, on his wife's behalf, probably so. And on mine, too, because we didn't know about each other. When I was pregnant with Trista, I had no idea. Like, when Adam and I were dating, it was no other woman, you know. We dated, I even kept this other daughter, Gabrielle, from Tracy, his second wife. Mm -hmm. And we were dating, we were having a good time, living life, got pregnant with Trista. And then when I got pregnant with Trista, you know, it caused a little, kind of, he didn't want a kid, you know, but I told him I'm not having an abortion, I'm gonna have my daughter. But you, you didn't have no idea that he was married? He wasn't married at the time. Okay. He married when I was six or seven months pregnant. Okay. And I didn't know, we didn't know. But when he, I'm thinking the time he got married was, because he told me his mother was ha having a stroke or something up in Omaha. And that's why he was, he went missing, you know. Because I would call, I was like, how is your mom doing? You know, things like that. And, oh, she's doing good. She's getting better. But I'm thinking at that time, that's when he was up doing his thing with the, um, the other lady, the young lady. And, um, so I, oh, long story short, so this is how everything happened. My daughter, I had my daughter two weeks, two weeks after I had my daughter, I called his house because my baby was vomiting a lot and new mom, family's not there. Don't know what to do. So I'm thinking I may have to take her to the hospital. So I called him and when I called him, I said, hey, may have to take Trista to the hospital. She's vomiting a lot. And it's almost, that's just the phone from her. And it's her, it's, I hate to talk about it because she's not here now, but it's her. And, um, and who's uh, it's Samra. Okay. It was Samra. And um, she said, who is this? And I said, it's Martha. She said, oh, Martha? So I guess she had heard about me because we were dating. And um, she said, do you know he's my husband? I said, husband? Are you kidding me? I said, we have a kid together. Two weeks old. They come over to my house. She said, well, can I come talk to you? And I said, sure. That's just me. That's how I was raised. <laughs> So I let them come over. It was him, her. It's him, her, and Gabrielle. They had because he at that time he had custody over Gabrielle, and they come and I show her Trista, and he said, "This is my baby." He told her, he said, "This is my baby," and I said, "You married?" And he says, "I'm not really married." I said, "Did you guys get married?" And she said, "We did in Vegas, and you knew it." And she pulled. She had her marriage license there. And I, I think, and I'm like seven months, seven or eight months pregnant when he did this. So I said, okay, that's fine. I said, 
I don't I don't want any more dealings with you. I mean, but we wasn't together. Like he had done probably pretty much dumped me. Like when I got pregnant. But he was still keeping in touch. You know how keeping in touch, being there if I needed something and things like that. Cause it was hard, because I had a dad. So it's hard for me not to allow someone to get me pregnant not having a dad. But anyway, so he kept in touch and he was there on the birth and through it all. And so I told her, I said, listen. I'm not gonna have any more dealings with him, long as but he will take care of my daughter. And she said, no, 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 I have no problem with that. And that's just how it was for a long time. But that night he did leave her at my house. <laughs> you know, they had this big fight out the door and he left her. And I let her, I let her stay. And my mom, I called my mom and mom said, Martha, you can't let that girl stay. And I said, well, mom, what am I gonna do with her? You know, she's not even from this country. And then she said, well, make sure she eats and stuff and then take it to her hotel. So I did. And we were good for a long time. You know, she'll call and, how's the baby? I said, she's doing good. And then she said, well, Martha, you know, Adam and I have a lot of history, so I'm going to be with, you know, I got to be. I said, I understand. That's fine. You know, just know it's okay. And that's just how we found out. So it wasn't like I was dating a married man. Not true. Like, it was like eight or nine months I've. He got married. All this stuff came to my thing. She didn't know I had a kid. I didn't know he was married to her. And that's how that happened. Of course, my mom said, it's too much. Come home. You know how parents are. Mm -hmm. Come home. Don't worry about him. We're going to take care of this baby. We're going to help you. And that's what they did. I didn't pressure him to do anything. He didn't do anything for about, I want to say, almost a year. Six months to a year. And I didn't pressure it because I know he had to deal with that part of his life. Didn't put him on. My mom never put my dad on child support, so child support is not an option. We we make them, we take care of them. And that's that's the golden rule in our house. So that was it. Try. <laughs> um. Well, you bring up an interesting point. You said you make them, you take care of them. <laughs> that's very good. Um. How. How how are you supporting yourself? Hmm. I've been supporting myself through. Well, he'll he'll come give me money once a month. He'll give so, me, and then I he'll give me twelve fifty. So Adam. Adam, yeah, he's been. So Adam supporting you. Um, you can say that yes. Okay. Can, well, are you are you employed? That's all. Oh, uh, not asking. not right now. No. Okay. When when when's the last time you were employed? Um, my daughter was, I was probably seven or eight months pregnant. I couldn't work due to all the stress. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, my mom. 2010? I got pregnant in 09. And you had a kid in 2010. 2010. So, 09. So, you stopped, you stopped yeah. working in 09 or whatever? Okay. Yeah, pretty much. Okay. 2010, 09. Yeah. All right. I worked till I was like seven months, though. Alright. Seven or eight, I can't remember exactly. And and then you stayed at Arborview. Arborview until I had my twenty twelve or twenty thirteen? Yeah, about twenty twelve, twenty thirteen. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then you moved to, to Southwood. Southwood. A year ago. Almost a year in April. Okay. Mm -hmm. Alright. Um and Adam gives you, you said what? $1,250. Does <laughs> he on. pay your rent? That's what he gave me. That? Mm -hmm. I, do he pay my rent? On top of that? I pay my rent. That's how I pay my rent. When he gave me that, and then I had, I was dating someone too. You know, I have a boyfriend, so he'll help me with the rest of my bill if I needed him to. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, and just like, I mean, we're just trying to figure out. Yeah, you know, go ahead. <laughs> I mean, obviously, um, if you haven't worked for, what are you saying, approximately four years? Almost, yeah. Okay. Um, he's you, been he's been supporting me that time, during that time. He'll come give me my money. Okay. <laughs> just like the, did he buy you the car? He did. Mm -hmm. Did he? Okay. Mm -hmm. Do you have any other automobiles? I do. Okay. How many automobiles do you have? Two. What are they? Uh, Range Rover and Mercedes. Okay. I bought my Mercedes. 
Okay. <laughs> That's how I met Adam, actually. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and what, when did you meet Adam? It had to be in 08 or 09, whenever I purchased that car. Because I went to purchase a car, and the sales guy called me at work and said he wanted me to meet this guy. I said, you're a nice girl. Are you single? And I'm like, yeah, I'm single. Well, I got this great guy. He's the greatest guy. Anyway, but we met. Who and was the sales guy? Kendall. His best guy friend in the world. Yeah. But, um, I got to turn off. But, and that's how I met Adam. Okay. And from that point on, we just took off and we were dating and I got Trista and this is it. Okay. Um, how often did you stay in touch with Adam? Mm, when he, when, like what, when, when? Did you talk to him daily? No. Weekly? No. Did you see him daily? No. Weekly? Monthly? No. Probably sparsely. He comes around when he gets ready. What does that mean? When he feels like he want to come see Trista, he'll call and pop up or pop up. Okay. It wasn't a lot, though. But I made sure I get my money every month. You know, I call him like, hey, it's for, in some, like January, he didn't give me anything. So I had to pay it myself with the money I had saved. How would, how does he usually pay you? Cash, check, cash. So he gives it to you in person? Mm-hmm. Okay. So you see him at least monthly generally. That's correct. Okay. Yeah. Um when when's the last time you spoke to Adam? Friday. Uh, this past Friday. Mm-hmm. Did he, did he tell you anything? Did he say anything? He just said he was really hurt and sad about everything. And he was really sad. He was crying and said he was really sad and hurt about everything. And they threw him in jail and they treated him bad. And, um, and I said, well, Adam, you got to pray. That's all you can do right now, pray and trust God. And um, he says, well, I don't, he talked about his wife. He said, you know, it hurts me that she's gone. I said, I know, Adam, I know you loved her. And um, he just said, well, I'm trying to get everything straight now. And um, tell my daughter I love her. And I said, okay, we, I will. I said, we'll keep you in our prayers. And that was it. Okay. Um, that was the last time I talked to him. All right. What, what do you know about what occurred? Nothing. I mean, reading the, reading the papers and stuff, you know it's all out there. I just know she was found dead in the pool. That's okay. it. But Adam hasn't said anything to you. Mm-mm. But even since you've talked since, I mean... He hadn't mentioned what had happened or anything. Not a day that Saturday, he did call me about 9.30, 9.30-ish, something, with the kids. He said he was on his way over to my house. And um, I wasn't there. I said, well, Adam, I'm not there. And he said that she needed a break. She said, well, he said, well, Sandwich said she needed a break from the kids, mm-hmm. and I was gonna take them to the beach. And I said, oh, okay, well, you know, today my birthday. Actually, that was my birthday. Mm-hmm. I said, today my birthday, so I'm, I'm in, I think I was like in Clearwater or something. I was on my way home, coming home. And um, he said, oh, you're, you're on your way home? I said, yeah. He said, well, oh, happy birthday. I said, well, thank you. And um, he said, well, I was thinking about taking them to the beach. I said, well, I'm going on the Boca. And then I may go to South Beach in the morning, I'm not sure. And he said, well, maybe I'll take him, but I don't know if Samra's going to come along with us. Like, he's going to get there, and then Samra comes. I said, okay, that's fine. I've been planning to see him. It's my birthday. I said, okay, that's fine. And that was it. He said, have a good birthday. I said, okay, thank you. So he told you he was going where? To the He's going to take the kids to the beach. He had the two kids, because I can hear them in the background, in the car. First, he said he was coming to my house. It was about 9.30, and I was gone. I was like in Clearwater, one of those places. I had done, got on down this road, because I made it to coolest in that too. I left Tallahassee about 5.30, 6 o'clock that morning. Which morning, that Saturday morning? Saturday morning. God's grace, thank you, Jesus. But I was gone. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. And do you remember what beach you said he was gonna take the kids to? He had mentioned Miami. 
he had mentioned Miami. So he said, I may take him. He wasn't really sure where he was going to go take him. Mm -hmm. He said, well, maybe I'll take him down to Miami. And I said, well, Trista's going to be with my mom, you know, because I'm getting some free time. And he said, well, every, well, that's what Sarah wants. She wants free time, and that's why I'm taking him. I said, well, every parent deserves some free time. And he, when I heard he was in Panama City, I was like, well, I thought he was coming to Miami. But I didn't find out about it until, like, I was getting my face made up because I had a date that night till, um about 5, and I was devastated. I couldn't believe it. Um, you and uh, Samira, you guys had a few run-ins down the road, didn't you? Mm -hmm. I left him alone. You guys never, we never had a run-in at level eight? That wasn't me. I never was there. Mm -mm. She had a run-in with Monica then. Not me. I don't really, I have a, I have a three-year-old. I don't have no family there. I'm a full-time mom. Daddy comes every now and then. When he comes, he just come, bring her toys, play with her a little bit, and he's gone. Well, wouldn't you uh, go do some things sometimes when Monica would watch your daughter? Yeah, sometimes. But that's like I go to. I went to the championship game when Florida State. No, that was not it. I went to some game, some national game, Super Bowl. One of these times I went somewhere, and I let Monica. But I'm pretty much a full-time mom. That's it. But that run-in wasn't with me. That was with Monica and her friends at Level 8. And I just heard about it. I really didn't have any run-ins with her. When, it, when I found that she was, um, you know, they had did that, I left all that alone. Only thing I do is meet Adam once a month, pick my money up, and we go. I go back home. He goes his way. I'm not the trouble kind of girl. I'm not going to fuss a fight or anything like that. But I never really talked to her. Now, she wanted Adam to get a fraternity test with my daughter about two or three weeks ago or four weeks ago. I got it in my phone. I can tell you the exact date. And that's the only time I called because they wanted to get it done at 1, like around 1 30-ish. So I wanted to make sure they were going to be there or he was going to be there, and I called. And when I called, she was just like, you motherfucking bitch, you know, cussing me out and stuff, but that's fine. I Why, mean. after a couple of years, did she want to do that? That's just how she was. And did y'all do it? Oh, yeah. We and came back that out on this thing? 99.99% yes. She just wanted it done. She just said, because that boy, she's a bitch, and she's a whore. But that's just the type of person. And I just said, well, I'll pray for you. I'll pray for you. Why are you so angry? And that's all I said to her. And he says, all right, Martha, we'll be there at one. He said, okay. Yeah. And that's the only that I can recall. You'll be where at one? Huh? He said, you'll be where? We, we went to the DNA Center. And that was a couple of weeks ago? About, about four weeks ago. Probably a month now. About a month now. We did a That's it. Um, aside from the vehicles that you have, mm -hmm. um, obviously Adam has a ton, ton of vehicles. Stuff. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, you ever drive any of his vehicles? Mm -hmm. Never. I drove his son's car. His son had a Mini Cooper, a Mini Cooper, mm -hmm. and I drove that every now and then. But he came and got it from me, so. Okay. Any other cars? That was it. Um, the day you were coming down to Clearwater, or I was coming to Bellglade actually, but I went through Pearson first. Okay. Um, I'm, I'm assuming obviously you had your daughter with you. That's correct. Um, did you have anybody else with you? No, just me and my daughter. Just you and your daughter? Mm -hmm. Okay. And you're saying that you got down? I got to close about 2 o'clock. About 2 p.m.? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. And you spoke to him on the phone that That's morning? No, about 9.30. He called me. You guys talked for a long time, short time? 
It wasn't that long because I told him. He said he was going to come over and help me with my car. Because my truck had been t torn up that week. And I had been back and forth to the shop. And I said, well, I already got it fixed. Because I got it fixed. I got, I got it fixed Thursday morning in that storm. I got up like it was no tomorrow. That was God. And I went and got my car fixed. And Jaime fixed it. And I got on the road early. About five something that morning. I went to that shell station. Y'all get to take, y'all see my truck park right there. If I got my credit card, y'all can see where I left to go out. What shell station? It was off of Capital Circle. You know, Capital Circle. 90 the, East? Oh, right Cap there at the Appalach Parkway? Yeah, Capital Circle. Right across, if you go that way, it's KLC. Mm -hmm. That shell station right there, I got that gas from. And that was around 5 or? About 530, 530-ish. I don't see my truck there. And it, it was two women there. I, I, I don't know their names, but they, they can say, yes, yeah, she was here. <laughs> When's the last time you've been at out of house in Golden Eagle? Mm -hmm. I haven't been there. Ever? I have been there before, but I haven't been there since nothing. I mean, um, since nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I went once. I have a, I went I went about ooh, the pickup about I know they had she wasn't living there. They had separated. She was living somewhere else and he had the house. Mm -hmm. And I went to pick up my money for my you know, I get my money. Yeah. <laughs> and I went to pick up my money. That was it. And it had to be I got it in my phone. I had to tell my sister where I go. <laughs> And I can tell you that day though, I went out there. If they have to tell me where I go everywhere. It's gonna take some time to look because she takes me a lot. That'd be like four months ago or something. keep pretty much everything in your phone like if I'm talking to myself like I have to tell them like if I leave because it's just me and Trista mm -hmm. so if I'm leaving and it's kind of late or something they want to know like where are you going where are you going with kind of thing so if anything ever happened to me they don't know <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah that's good Martha do you remember what you were wearing that Saturday morning so if we pull that video we'll yeah be able to... I had on some jeans and a white shirt and a cap okay. I need like my gas records. When I gas, I got them too. Y'all need them. You said earlier that Saturday he was heading over to your house. Mm -hmm. um, That's what he said. Um, does he normally head over to your house? Near you, you know. Not really. Like, you know, whatever he gets ready. But but you had already gotten paid for February, right? Yeah. I had already got paid for February. But he was coming to help. I remember my car was torn up that week. So he said he was coming to help me with my car. Okay, what was what was torn up with it? It was the um cylinder misfire. I was having a cylinder misfire. That I needed to get changed out. What else? Cylinder misfire is something else in here. So they changed the cylinder in your car? Mm -hmm. And how quickly did they do this? Well, they kept coming because they wanted to say it was my transmission. You know how you go to car places, they're going to try to rip you off. Mm -hmm. I say, ain't nothing wrong with my transmission. Y'all put that cylinder in my car and let me go. So it was a cylinder. A, a cil it don't take long to do it. But he was trying to find other stuff. And I just wanted to go for it. And when, when did you have that done? Thursday morning. Thursday morning. Mm -hmm. But I had went there. I went there Wednesday too, 
And I went that other week too, but I can ride it. The thing is, it didn't really mess up until like I stopped. And then you know that when a car do that, that's a cylinder or some type of misfire. But it really it seemed like it was getting back right. And then, so I didn't, I was supposed to take it back that Monday, but I didn't because it sounded like it was riding good. And then Wednesday come, there you go again. I said, I'm going to take this car back up there. So I took it back up there. Sure. Were you with that one? Hmm? Were you with that's that? That's my daughter. Mm-hmm. Thursday? Thursday. Hey, Monica. Sorry. Monica dropped me. Monica, I took Monica out of rental car. And then she was, I was going to plan it. Not this. Yeah, mm-hmm. it was Thursday. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, I took my car there that Friday. Friday morning. Friday morning. Because Thursday, Monica had took me by there. Because she got a rental car. And um, we were going to, I was going to leave my car, but I don't like leaving my car nowhere. Because. I just don't. Mm-hmm. So it was Friday morning because I didn't leave a Saturday, Saturday morning. So Friday, was it? Yeah, Friday. Because after that, I want to get my hair done. Yeah. What kind of rental car did she have? Monica, it was a red, some type of red looking car, like a red Audi looking. Just like a red a, passenger car? Yeah, a small passenger car. Okay, but you don't know the bank or anything. Yeah. That's all right. It's okay. Um, did you speak to Adam Thursday? Yeah. Okay. Briefly. What that conversation entail? I just said my car. That's when I told him my car was messing up. Mm-hmm. And he had already taken that little mini coupe away. Mm-hmm. So I was like, well, my car messing up. I'm going to have to see about getting that taken care of. And he said, hey, yeah. He was like really like he said I missed my my court day. He missed his court day with Tracy. He thought it was at that evening, but it was earlier that morning. So he missed it. And he was like, I'm just sick of everything. And um, he said that, you know what? I'm getting sick of everything. I said, What do you mean? He said, I'm just I'm getting tired. I said, Adam, are you talking about hurting yourself? He said, I'm getting tired of everything. You may not have to worry about me. And then I panicked because I'm thinking he's gonna hurt himself. And I called Kendall, you know, his best friend. I said, listen, and I called his office too. And I said that, he just said like he's gonna hurt himself. That was on Thursday? That was Thursday. And I called him and I said, Kendall, you gotta call him. He's acting like he's gonna hurt himself. And I told him, of course, I told him nobody but God has that permission. And he said, I'm just so sick of everything. That's what he told me, Thursday. And that was Thursday before this the incident occurred. That's correct. Yeah. Uh, but you, you knew did. he was going through a divorce, correct? Oh yeah. Okay. Did he mention anything Thursday about the divorce? Mm-hmm. He was just talking about the lawyers, because <laughs> he could stand lawyers. Mm-hmm. And um, he was just tired of everything, and he couldn't take it no more. So I wasn't gonna have to worry about him anymore. I said, Adam, you can't talk like that. You got to be positive, you know? God takes care of everything. And I, I hung up the phone, because Monica's dude just killed himself, Shane, about a month ago. Mm-hmm. And so that really, like, hit home for me, because I, I really like Shane a lot. And so I called Kendall, and I said, Kendall, you got to call him. It sounds like he wants to hurt himself. And um, he kept calling him, kept calling him, kept calling him, but couldn't get him. And when he found him, he said, he's all right, man. Because Kendall seemed like the only one could get something through to his head. All right. So then you don't talk to him Friday? I don't. At all. Um, And then Saturday you talk to him. And he's... Got the kids. I can hear him in the background. On his way to your house, though? On my way to my house. Which? That's how you do things. Out the blue. That's just how you do it. So you ever brought the kids to your house before? When he had custody over him, I kept them some time for him. He had custody for a while when they were going through this divorce. Mm-hmm. The judge ordered him custody, and when he go to work, I'll keep the kids. Do you keep them at your house? At my house. This house? My house. Okay. Mm-hmm. So about when was that? <laughs> I think it was in September. Let me make sure. I want to get y'all the wrong information. 
Pinterest take all the dates, don't they? Generally. This is all real. My daughter, his daughter. I don't know the date. Okay. Mm -hmm. the, uh, the boy? No, that's a little girl. The youngest one? Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's see. I don't know how to do the date. Let me see. If you go back, I think, to your... Uh, the thing. The, the camera roll or whatever it is. They usually get them. But that's when he had custody. I used to keep him while he go to work. I don't know how you can tell the date though. It had to be around like September. September. Around September. Um, but just to make sure, and no, it's okay. You're sometimes good. I go back over things just to make sure I'm keeping things straight in my head here. Mm -hmm. Um, so Saturday, you left town very early. Very early. You weren't at his residence Saturday. No, I was not. At all. At all. Okay. Last time you were at his residence was. Five months ago, six. whenever they were going to this divorce, divorce. yeah. Okay, all right. So, and it was I only to pick up my money. <laughs> <laughs> um, was Adam a, did Adam basically come around when he wanted to? I mean, he would pop up, you're saying, was Adam. and I mean, obviously. Uh, He'll knock on the door. Hey, I say, who is it? Is that didn't affect you and your boyfriend? Thank God that he, my man, didn't live in town because he wouldn't. He wouldn't stand for it. Well, let me. Ask, I mean, mm -hmm. uh, what what was it? when he come? I know the last time he did it, he went. He wanted to take my daughter to a football game, Florida State football game, and it was just that was him. I said, what do you want? And he was like, I want to go to a football game. I want to take Trista. And that was the last time. Sometimes he'll call, though, before he comes. And sometimes he'll just be at the door. So did he take her to a game? He did. Yeah. This past year? This year, yeah. 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 We, what, what, what was Adam? I mean, he'd come around, whatnot. Um, I mean, obviously, he was giving you at least twelve hundred fifty dollars a month, correct? That's correct. Okay. Um, what was Adam getting out of the deal? He has a kid there, nothing. Uh, oh, were y'all still just, having a relationship all the time? No. no, I think he put me through all that. No way. What What I mean is, <laughs> is did, did he ever take his daughter? Take her like. By himself. No. I mean, what was it? What were the arrangements? No, usually if he come and want to take her, I go with them. Okay. I don't even care if he had one of those girls with them. So did you go with them to the ball game? I time? did. It was me, him, his girl at the time he was seeing. Because I'm not gonna let him take my daughter by herself. That's just how I am. Well, let me ask you: Is it unusual for him to have had his two kids? During this period that he and Sam were having going through their divorce and all, um, without I mean he shouldn't have had them. I mean I guess because of the court documents, right? But he said she called and said she wanted a break. But I do know he had been she had been letting him back in, like staying there sometimes and stuff. He had, she had started letting him back in. But was she letting him take the kids off by herself? That was the only day that I knew that. He had them that day. Any other day, it's like they were all together, like as a couple, you know, as a family. If they went anywhere, but that was the only day that I knew that I knew of that he had them by himself. 
one of them. Because I don't talk to, you know, like, he's the kind of guy that comes, call you when you get ready, kind of guy. <laughs> so. Why wouldn't you let him? Take my kid. Take, well, take his child. It is his child, thank you. Because <laughs> Adam may have that girl in Alaska if I call. Where you at? And he'll say, this is my baby too. He was just that type of guy. You tell him, you go to this door, he may go to that door. That's just Adam, his personality. So I didn't want to wake up and I don't know my baby. I didn't want her to be at the Hard Rock somewhere and she's supposed to be at a game. So I had to, that's my baby. And he never like, I, I've been raising her, you know, and I just, they never been away together like without me. So I just So then again, to getting back to, he paid you, Twelve hundred fifty dollars a month. Mm -hmm. What were the arrangements? What What did he? Besides, it sounds like he really never got to see his daughter. So he that's why I'm her. asking. He's her what, sometimes. What did he get out of the, the, the arrangement? Nothing. We've never had. had we better. haven't had sex. So I'm not getting at that. Oh, what? Are I you don't saying? care. What about What that. What are you saying? Did Did he have free reign to come over when he wanted? No. Okay. Um, were you essentially his babysitter if he called and said, I need you if to do I this? If, I mean, did if you he, work for him? I mean, no, did I didn't you, work for him. I mean, not <laughs> at his office, but if he called no, I didn't and work said, for him. I need this, would you, if he said jump, did you ask how high? No. I mean. It was stipulations. I mean, if okay. he, he had the kids, and if he needed to go to work, because I know he needs to work, and we have to get food to eat, I'm going to keep those kids, you know? Mm -hmm. That was it. We didn't have no type of relationship in that way. He was dating other people. And I I was dating other people. But there was no court order as far as child support? With my daughter. Mm -hmm. I don't have him on child support. Right. So, how, I mean, y'all just came up with the agreement that he would pay you twelve fifty a month. No, that's how much my rent was. So, that's what he knows he need to give to me. And I call him. And he, we make arrangements for me. If he ever needed money, extra money and all, would he give it to you if you called him? Sometimes he would. It all depends on what I need it for. <laughs> well, if he's, if your rent is twelve fifty, at Southwood, is that what you're talking about? If it's twelve fifty and he gives you twelve fifty a month, and you're not working, how? I get me some money. I have a, I had a boyfriend. Okay, so he's giving you money as well, is what you're saying. Yeah, I'll work if I need it, yeah. Okay. But no, no, no other no other money's coming from Adam? Mm -mm. No. Okay. Alright. And your you said your other your your boyfriend, he lived out of town, right? Yeah. Okay, so how did he get you money? I used to go there once a month. <laughs> Where's that? It was um Ohio, living in Ohio. Right, so you so went to Ohio once a month? Yeah. You fly, drive? Fly. fly. I'm not going to drive no living. <laughs> drive across country every day. That's how we eat. It's called yeah. truckers. So he would pay your way? Yeah. So obviously he has money. He He's a normal guy. What that means? Yeah. He got a normal job. I'm a normal guy with a normal job, but well, I can't afford to fly you to Ohio once a month. It was only him. He don't have any kids or anything. Uh, well, that's what he did. <laughs> what, what, what does he do? He works. He's like the engineer for the roads in Lebanon. Okay. Right. So he makes good money. Yeah, and he has some apartments. Um, rentals. He has some rentals. Okay. He was a normal guy. He was him and Adam the opposite. <laughs> so Adam's not a normal guy? He's a normal guy, but a different norm. Well, obviously, Adam trusts you a lot. Has trust in you. Mm -hmm. Would he confide in you in anything? I think he would. I don't, I don't know. I mean, I think if he needed someone to talk to, I'll be the person he'll talk to. Like, for prayer, because I always pray and stuff like that. But that's it. Well, when he called you that Saturday and told you he had the kids and all, you didn't and think that was unusual? 
and he was on my on my way to my house. <laughs> so that's what I was. He does he does stuff like that though. He just called and popped up sometimes. That's Adam. I wasn't home though. I just said you. It was kind of he had the kids, and he's and he, but he was. My, I was talking to my mom and I said, Mom, this is Adam calling. So it was kind of different. And she said, okay, well, just call me back, baby. And I turned to him, I got the phone to him. He said, hey, Martha. And he seemed not a good place, though. Usually Adam is like, karate, you know. But he seemed calm and he was at a good place. Because I remember hanging up with him. I said, Mom, Adam really sounded like he was at a good place today. He sounded happy today. She said, well, that's good. And he had the babies, because I can hear those babies back there. You said he sounds like he's in a good place. You ever heard or seen Adam in a bad place? Adam and he he's he's at I don't know if y'all know him, but like he's sometimes he can just be rapping off his mouth, like if he don't want to do you know. I'm just, you know, being Adam. I don't know. We don't, we don't know, know Adam. Like, I don't know Adam. But he's always like he's a good person, but it's not like he has when he's hyper, like hyperacting, he just rattles off, you know, but he was like calm that day in a good place. We're not saying he's not a good person. Yeah. Okay. And sometimes good people make poor decisions. Mm -hmm. Has he, have you ever witnessed him make a poor decision or anything? Have you ever witnessed, I mean, what's he like? He's a good guy. I mean, he, I don't know how to explain him. I mean, he can, you You ever see him get angry? Yes. Okay. Uh, now, that, now, <laughs> we're getting, that, now we're using some adjectives and getting descript, yeah. descriptive here. He has been okay. angry. You see him lose his temper? Not his temper, but he gets angry where it's like just fussing for nothing. You know, fussing because he's the type of guy, his, he's always right. And he always wants his way? Yes. He's always right. Yeah. And, and what if he doesn't get his way and, and it's just always that's just how he was <laughs> but I'm asking what if he doesn't get his way how does he behave he'll go on by this business <laughs> he'll just say let her just rattle it off if he don't get his way he just can't get his way he'll never like he never did anything to me you know or made me feel threatened so you're never you were never scared of him mm -mm. And you're not. Mm -mm. Um, but you witnessed him and Samira together, correct? When that day they came to my house. That was the only time you ever saw them together. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. All right. So you never saw anything. You said he left that day. He see. left your house. He left her at your house. Yeah, that day. Okay. He did. So they got heated with one another? Outside. I don't know. I was I had, I was in the house and she just said, could she come to my house because he had left her. And I said, okay, come on. And I let her in. And we talked. And I, you know, she said, she didn't know. I didn't know. We were both, I feel like we were both victims of this. Because I didn't know. She didn't know. And then all of a sudden, I got this little crying baby. Two weeks. And she married to this man. So it was just, that was a lot for me. It was a lot for her because she, you know, and we didn't know it. I said, well, I got a family. As long as he take care of his baby, I'm done with him. I'm done. And she said, I'm done. You know, at that time she was going to be done too, you know. And she didn't know. So we were both had headaches that day. <laughs> but my mom said, no, you can't keep her here, Martha. And I didn't. So at the other day, I, I took her to a hotel. And she ended up letting him come get her, I think. He came and got her after five days. Yeah. Um. But I hadn't seen her or anything no more. I went on with my life. 
Well, you said earlier that you knew that he had been going back to the house and that you've seen them with him and the kid, her and the kids. No, I knew that they were him and the kids because he was at the house. Remember that day I had to get the blood test from Tristan? He was at the house. And he had said, she didn't let me come home. I've been staying at home and trying to fix it. We're trying to recon, what do you call it when you're trying to get back things together? Reconcile. They're trying to reconcile things. So well, obviously, y'all talk quite a bit. Not a lot, but when he, if you meet Adam, when you meet him, he's going to tell you the whole story, <laughs> the whole life, whatever he's going through, you'll know about it the same day you meet him. So when we talk, he talks about everything. And that's just how he is. <laughs> We talk, not a whole, whole lot, but he'll call, or if I need something, I'll call. But you can believe, when you do call, he's going to ravel off. So, call on Saturday morning. Mm-hmm. He called Saturday morning. I'm sorry? He called me Saturday morning. He didn't find that strange. That's just something you don't do on any other day. You just pop up or call out the blue. That was Adam, you know? And he had the kids, and he said she needed a break. He said, well, Samuel, let me take the kids today because she needs a break. Like I said, every mother needs a break. And I was on my way. I said, And he said he was coming to my house, though. And I said, I was on my way going home today, my birthday. He said, well, happy birthday. I said, thank you. He said, we're going to take the kids to the beach. And I said, well, I'm going on down to Boca. And he said, well, he was thinking about it. He wasn't sure at the time which beach he was going to take them to. He said he may even take them to South Beach. So I guess he ended up taking them to Panama City to his house there. Did he say when he and his wife were supposed to meet up again? He said that she may, she needed some time to herself. And she may, but he did say it. She may come down here to South Beach with us. And I said, oh, okay. You guys enjoy my birthday. I was, you know, when you turn your birthday, you be the happy. I turned 40. So I was like, whoa, I'm the happiest 40 year old in the world. <laughs> yeah. And I was there. And then about five, I think I was getting my face made because I had, you know, I was going out on a date. And um, when I got the news, it was like, whoa. I said, Mama! I called my mama because my cousin was doing I said, Mama, they say Adam's wife is dead. I said, what? So it was devastating. You know, she said, thank God he was home. Thank you, Jesus. I said, amen. And I went to preaching because I know he was on his way to my house. I don't know why. You know, why would they say, thank God you're at home? Because I ain't got no dealings. He was on his way to my house. You know, he was. For what? I don't know. He said, my car. And I had told him to put the money in my bank. If you want to help me, you know, he got my, my account number. I said, well, if you want to help me with my car, you can put some money in my account. And he said, well, you know, we're going through rough times because of the Medicaid, whatever you got going on with that. I said, well, how are you going to help me with my car? You ain't got no money. You say, well, I, and you ain't no mechanic, so that's what I'm thinking. He sure spends a lot of money not to have any money. My point, but he always with me. He never had money. He gave me that 1250 If I ask for anything else, he'll try to cut my head off. So I just make it happen myself. But he gave the car too, right? He bought that when I... Um, well, this is the story about the car. He bought me a car when I was pregnant with Trista because my, my um, Mercedes is a two-door, you know, those little cars. So he bought bought me this car. I saw it at Michael's. And I said, I want that car. And he said, I didn't even know I was going to get it. So he surprised me with a car. Not that one. It was a black one. It was a black Range Rover he surprised me with. And I had it. But when Samra found out that he bought me that car, she was upset. And she wanted him to give it back, get me to give it back. And I, who can have it? I gave it back to him. And he says, well, since Samra wants that car back, I'll just buy you another one. 
I said, okay, that's fine. So he bought you two. She had the black one though. She <laughs> did get that one. Uh, Adam will buy it. Adam bought cars every weekend, so buying a car was nothing to him. <laughs> so he spent a lot of money. Yeah, but when I asked for it, he had like he ain't got none. So I was. Hmm. Drink? Would you like some water or anything? I'm good. Okay. So he's having financial problems? Yes. And that's due to what? He said because Tracy, um, Tracy got into court with Medicaid. Her, her attorney reported to Medicaid that, see, on child, I guess Tracy getting child support. And on a, I think he was getting like $800,000 a year from Medicaid. And he didn't report that on his child support, you know, like for the thing. And I guess Tracy found out about that. And so her attorney subpoenaed Medicaid or something. I don't know how it go. So they stopped paying him. And that's where his bulk of money was coming from. Medicaid? Medicaid. Medicaid what? Like? When you see Medicaid patients, they pay you every week for that. And so now they kind of stopped the money. Because he would tell me, you know, Martha, I really don't have any money because of the Medicaid. So I just... Mm -hmm. So he was, like, in short, on, on cash. So what you going to do if that total 50 stops? I'm going to go to work. <laughs> That's what I got to do. I'm, I'm just kidding. No, I'm just telling you. I'm going to go to work. Baby's gonna eat for sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. I just gonna go to work. I mean, I worked 13 years for the state of Florida. I mean, it was just a lot on me, you know, with the kid and finding that was a lot on me mentally, physically. First kid, that's a lot. So my mom and I said, just come home. And I came home. I kept my place though, but I come home and I was with them and they helped me. I got a good family. <laughs> Even to, if I need help today, they're going to help. They help. That's what we do. Martha, when he called you after um, the incident occurred and everything, and he's talking to you, and I mean, what all did he say happened? He didn't say anything about it. He just, he was, he was sad, and like he was crying a lot. Like, <laughs> I'm just, he was like crying and stuff. And he said he just feels really bad. And um, he mentioned about the people did him bad when he went to jail. <laughs> and he just. I mean, he didn't even tell you what what happened? He didn't. He said that he's making arrangements. He, don't, he didn't know if he was going to have a cremated or have a, um, a, a ceremony for it. He didn't. He said, I don't know if I'm going to have a cremated. I know she wanted to be cremated. Or a ceremony. I mean, you don't think it's odd for him not to even talk to you about whether it was an accident or, you know, what could have happened or, I mean, he just called crying that she was gone? I mean, didn't even go he into... He sad. Yeah. He didn't go into... I'm just being honest. He didn't go into details about it. Well, how did you find out? Kendall called me. When did Kendall call you? It's about five Sunday afternoon. What did he say? He said, Martha. And I said, what's up, Kendall? He said, Samra is dead. I said, you know, I was shocked. I said, no, Kendall, you lying. And he says, she's dead, Martha, for real. He said, Doc didn't even know. I had to call and tell Doc. I said, what did he do? And he said, he just started crying. And I was like, oh my gosh, can you be lying? He said, no, she's dead. And that was it. So did you try to call out him? Mm-mm. I did not Why wouldn't you call him? Yeah. If y'all 
close. What did you check on? I mean, we were close, but that he'll call me if he needed anything. I mean, we just really we didn't talk every day. Like we were good friends. Yeah, you know? yeah, but his wife just was died. I mean, and you say you pray for him and all like that. I, I would. I, would I think just you didn't call. Reach him. out to him. I didn't call him. I'm well. The truth, to, I didn't call him. I just I. I had a, I was going on a date, you know, I was getting my face made, I was running late, and I was just devastated by the news, and I didn't call. I didn't call. They're not devastated enough to get your face done and continue to go on the date. No, but you could believe her makeup artist, she was like, Martha, you gotta calm down, you gotta calm down. But my mom said, baby, it's your birthday, you gotta enjoy your birthday. And I was running late, and my dude is the type, he's up. Time guy, so he makes the time. I gotta kind of be here. Is this the guy from Ohio? No, <laughs> no, it's not him. It's the guy I met in the process of Ohio. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, me in Ohio. Ohio found out he has two twins, two little babies. So that kind of put a nudge in me in Ohio. About a month, not even a month now, about, about a month ago, he found, I know this girl was pregnant. He met her before me, but he wasn't sure the babies were his. And um, I, I supported him through that. And when he found out the baby was his, he is kind of like, you know, those two babies have just found that I'm okay. When he called you, when Detective Shea called you and told you we wanted to come down and talk to you, you haven't talked to Adam? Mm-mm. No, ma'am. Not at all. I mean, obviously, we drove a long way, so it was very important, this, this little meeting here. And um, during this investigation, we have gathered a lot of information. Mm -hmm. And I just, I want you to understand that if you know something and you're not telling us, you've got a lot to lose. You've got a beautiful daughter. Mm -hmm. And you've got an opportunity right now to tell us what you know because... There's nothing that I know towards that. Nothing. Because you don't want it to come back later and bite you and end up getting in trouble because that's going to take you away from your daughter. I know. I don't have... Nothing to say. It's just that. hard for me to believe that as much as he confide, confides in you. He, I'm telling you just what he told me. That's all he told me. I think it's strange. I'm having trouble trying to figure out why he's going to your house that morning and you're not questioning it. Because that's just something Adam do. Adam will pop up any time. That's, <laughs> that's Adam. He'll knock on my door. Who is it? It'd be Adam. So... That's just something you do. I would think that showing up at somebody's house at that time of the morning unannounced on a weekend, though. I mean... That's Alan. To say... You don't think well, I mean, this is strange? You know, not just that. I mean, what if you had your, your Ohio friend there or whomever? I mean... They know I have a daughter's father. Well, I, I, I guess just, that. I mean, I didn't hold anything back from him. I'll just say... This is Trista's dad at the door. I mean, I had nothing to hide. I'm not saying in your relationship.